Hi guys, welcome to the 24th video on Beginning Java. In this video, we are going to talk about the differences between constructors and methods. Now, a constructor is a method. Yes, that is true. But I might also ask you if a whale is a mammal. Well, yeah, it is, but when I think of a mammal, I think of a bear, a human, or a monkey, something like that. Not a whale that's uh, swimming around in the ocean. Or uh, we might also ask, uh, is Pluto a planet? Yes, but, and then fill in all the blanks why it's not a planet. So those same analogies can be applied to the differences between a constructor method and what I like to call a normal method. So let's examine those right now. So I typed this all up today before the tutorials because I didn't want to bore you guys typing this all out. So if we come down here, we are going to kick everything off with the new keyword. And so the constructor here will get invoked. It'll come up here and create a new copy of this or instantiate this class. And we're going to call that test OBJ. Now, what the constructor does is takes this and, as I said, creates a copy of it. It gets loaded into something called the JVM, the Java Virtual Machine. And there's a thing in that Java virtual machine called a class loader. The class loader is what actually takes this copy and loads it out into memory so we can now use it as an object. Now, there's some things called a heap and a stack, and that's for much later tutorials. We won't get into that right now. And a lot of things that happen in the Java virtual machine, fortunately, are done in the background. So think of a constructor as the setup guy. He's kind of setting everything up so that this test OBJ can begin to do whatever work we want it to do. And of course, this all happens in the beginning. And after the constructor is done with his work, then the methods come into play. So kind of think of the methods as after the fact. The constructor sets everything up, and then the real fun starts with the methods. They are going to do a majority of the work. Now, you may want to do some things at startup time when this constructor is creating and instantiating this class. And so you can put some code inside the constructor and give it some things to do. And so that is somewhat similar to a method. So let's go ahead and run this. And you'll notice down here we got local variable A printed from the constructor method. We declared and assigned a value here and we printed it out inside this constructor method. Now I want to point something out very interesting here. Did you notice that nothing else happened here? These methods were not invoked. And the reason is, is if you look down here, we haven't used this object yet. That's why we're getting this IntelliSense to say it's not used. That's because the constructor creates the object and does some things that you want to do at startup time. But basically when this is done, it goes away and then you'll call your methods and your variables from this object. So that's a really good way to think of this. The constructor always comes first to create and instantiate the class and the methods come later to go ahead and do the real work. Now you might ask the question, well, why do I actually want to put anything in here? Why don't I just use some methods to do this later on? And the answer to that is, it's all up to you. You don't have to put anything in here. We could certainly create another method to do all this work, but there might be reasons why you want to do some initial work when you instantiate the class and create your object. And let's think of something more real world here. Let's say you're making a game here and you want to load up the first initial screen, maybe like the login screen to your game. Well, you're going to go ahead and do that right here and then your methods could go ahead and work on that screen after it's been loaded. And that brings me to another point I'd like to make. This screen that we just talked about in our video game that just got loaded, we can't return anything to that screen. So that's a key difference between constructors and methods. Methods can return values, constructors cannot. And the best way to think of that is the fact that constructors, again, are only involved at startup. Your methods will handle return values later on. And so if I try to go ahead and put a return value in here, and let's just try to do return A, we're going to get some IntelliSense that says, nope, can't do that. So that's just, uh, that's just the way it is. So that's a huge difference between constructors and methods. So let's actually put that in our comment. No void and no return. 
And by the way, you cannot use void in constructors as well. Now, this is a little bit complicated. I'm not going to explain today why void cannot be used. Just know that it cannot be used in constructors. I will get to that in a later tutorial. So you can't return a value and you can't use void in a constructor. Now, just to prove the point, let's go ahead and type in void here. And you remember when we ran this before, we got this printed out, right? The constructor did its work and we printed out this variable. Now let's go ahead and run this. Ah, look, we got zero, nothing. Because guess what? This is no longer a constructor. So when I ran this, Java just created the constructor for us since this is no longer even a constructor. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And if we run this again, boom, we got local variable A printed from the constructor method. So we're back in business. Now, in terms of the signature and this part right here, and right here is always called the signature, by the way. You will notice that you can use the public keyword. And those access modifiers like public, protected, those all can be used by both constructors and methods. So that's okay. We can go ahead and use those access modifiers. But what we can't do is use the second part of that signature, void and a return value in the signature of the constructor. So let's just do a, uh, another comment here. And we'll type in public and access modifiers okay to all and let's just go ahead and copy this over here over here good okay so and I will also point out we don't have a static method but static also cannot be used in a constructor so no static as well and actually you know what let's call this our void method Okay, so once again, no void, no return, and no static with our constructor. No static. Okay, so let's go ahead and use some of these methods that we created. So let's just do a test obj dot, and then let's go ahead and use this method. So let's just do an s out tab, and we will go ahead and do a test obj dot and let's go ahead and get that return value method here and we'll do a plus and we will say printed and you'll notice the IntelliSense went away from our object because now we're using it so let's go ahead and run this puppy and everything came out the way we wanted to except for this lack of a space right here so let's go ahead and put a space in there i've been known to have some ocd at times so let's go ahead and run that and look how nice and neat that is well that's pretty much it for this tutorial i will see you guys in the next video